Okay, well, I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I know I absolutely am thrilled with how my weekend's turned out. Uh, the props are all done. Um, again, I need to uh, stress that uh, I'm not building these. I will not be building these. Uh, I have no schematics or parts list or anything that I can really uh, supply because these were all off done. These were all done off the top of my head, and uh, you know, I just. Uh, was not documenting this beyond what I did in the videos and in the two threads, one at Hoppy Doc and one at RPF. Um, there should be enough information there for anybody who really wants to pursue this and has uh, some uh, pretty good electronic knowledge um, should be able to pull this off. Um, but now with Polar Lights uh, talking about maybe doing a styrene version of these, uh, some of this stuff might be easier to do, maybe even less uh, capable. Uh, but also AJ, who is the gentleman I got these props from, is moved on from apparently resin and now offers these over at Shapeway, which is um, 3D printed resin. I'm not sure how that material would work, but uh, uh, that's where you can buy the, the static props. Uh, so I'm not going to ramble too much because uh, a lot of this stuff was uh, talked about in the, um, uh, in, in the videos that I've done. Uh, up to this point and so let's look at just the the final detail that was uh, uh, taken care of um, I'm sorry this was my solution for the um, uh, for the uh, uh, grill area had to have provisions for the camera the real prop never could have worked because I think what they implied was that uh, the screen was actually a camera uh, uh, apparatus too and well I don't know how that would have worked in in real world this was the only solution I could come up with and I think it does pretty good on the side these are I guess control knobs they really don't dwell on a lot of the stuff that's on the prop in the show uh, I use them um, for speaker outputs uh, so they had to be porous so these are actually 3d printed miniature uh, uh, drain inserts <laughs> turned out pretty good um, uh, on this side of course uh, you know you have your regular buttons uh, these are static these are functional one turns on well it should turn on ah uh, there we go turns on the, the sound effects and also also turns them off because holding the prop would be just annoying so you just push it and it, oops it should yeah it, it kills the noise so you can actually you can actually hold the prop um, I've had to deal with the antenna right now for now hanging out the bottom because there's just so much going on in here that uh, uh, the noise the the EM noise uh, the electronic noise is just killing the transmitter portion so the range originally on the toys were not so great on these it's even worse when you talk about this all encompassed uh, uh, in one little package um, I'm just satisfied that I was able to do this and I can live at the short range uh, um, it was never intended to be anything more than a fun can I do it kind of uh, scenario and uh, as I said uh, my good friend R. Warren was so instrumental on coming off, I'm not going to pull the protective film off, but was so instrumental on helping with uh, the uh, secondary screen. I'm also not going to do anything here because I, I, they didn't really show a lot of this, and I'm not sure how I could dress this up without doing a lot of uh, sanding and puttying, and oh geez, I want to I wanna finish this. This project's been over two years, and I want to move on, uh, not continuously, of course, but I want to move on. So I can live with this. Hopefully R. Warren can. If not, he's more than welcome to block this in more. Uh, totally up to him. Um, but uh, the, the keypad turned out okay. Uh, these are decals that I had printed up. Um, that was kind of a nightmare to put on because the buttons are not smooth due to the fact that in the cast they're recessed, and that's where my wire went for my capacitive switches and when I put the epoxy on I mistakenly put it on didn't let it uh, sit long enough before I painted it and installed them but over time 
the epoxy shrunk a little bit, so I do have some some uh, divots that uh, um, uh, I had to contend with. But again, I'm not a rivet counter, so I'm not going to get all bent out of shape. Um, power button, menu, up, down. Um, it allows you to scroll through the various screens. Uh, uh, oh, that's volume. I'm sorry. Here we go. So let's. Uh, there we go. That's uh, that inverts what camera is uh, a, being picked up. This right now is the built-in uh, camera for the prop. Um, this is the. That's 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 audio feedback from from the prop uh, when you're in the spy mode. The one unit uh, shows what this camera, what this camera is picking up, and there's just a red alert here. Let me get out of here. There we go. So, anyways, um, back here, this comes off, and that's where the charging port is, and that's also where you can totally disconnect the battery from the prop. I'm not a big fan, even though the electronic switch that I used here is supposed to be zero load. Um, my experience that isn't always totally true so by plugging this in it totally disconnects the, the battery from the prop um, so that's uh, something I'll leave up to uh, our Warren or myself when I store these things so again uh, just thankful I was able to do it um, uh, this va this oh and also um, you have the the um, uh, belt clip of course I would never put it on because unfortunately it's not strong enough to really hold um, with a, uh, a person uh, the weight of the prop and you're liable to break it let's see if that'll fit yeah it does so he can put it on if he wants I, I, I'm not I'm gonna give it to him with it off and let uh, let him make that decision personally um, uh, I'd be afraid because this is just epoxied on and you could snap it off so but these are all decisions uh, he'll have to make uh, so um, now I can finally sorry for the rambling video I, I don't do these very well but I'm sorry about that uh, apparently my battery uh, crapped out on me and I'm not sure exactly where that was so anyways um, I'll pick up on this one of the last things that I kind of did uh, as a convenience um, for my friend and myself too as I made up this little power meter that I can plug in and over time I can verify just how much of a charge I've got in the battery so that I don't end up with the battery discharging past a point of uh, no return and um, you know just uh, uh, being uh, quite surprised that I now have to replace the battery so once again um, couldn't be more jazzed. Uh, the props are done. Uh, I can now move on to uh, my next project, which uh, I don't know if you guys follow much, um, and you can see this very well. Oops, no, got some got some glare issues, and of course, geez, what the hell? It's a crappy picture to begin with. Anyways, what this is is this is the uh, HO scale. Um, uh, Macer 66 Canon from Godzilla. It's a cool little kit. Uh, this uh, um, dish tracks when you go up and down. Uh, it's quite small. It's only 178 scale, 187 scale. Um, but I plan on uh, animating this. I've already got the electronics for the throat, the LEDs. Uh, I'll be doing a build video on this. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you where I'll be going from there. Here's the Here's the vehicle itself. Uh, uh, what I've done is i um, going to be putting in a full uh, two-motor track system. Uh, happen to find one that, as far as I'm concerned, fits pretty well. Um, some mods I have to make to it. Uh, I have added um, LEDs to it, so uh, the headlights will work. Um, this should be should be a lot of fun. It'll be full remote control. Um, so stay tuned for my next build um, uh, and I hope you all have a great weekend finally done <laughs> bye